Hey y'all, how's it going? It's Cyber Saloon. So the summer anime season basically just finished and I kind of wanted to go over some of the series that I ended up watching from start to finish. The And I thought, what better series to start it off than Fairy Tale 100 Year Quest? Oh, Fairy Tale, do I have a storied history with this one? When I heard that Fairy Tale was coming back, I had pretty mixed feelings about it. Um, I had read the manga as it was coming out. I read the uh, the, Ava- the Alvarez Empire arc, the final arc, well, seemingly final arc of Fairy Tale, as it was releasing. And while the first half of the uh, the Alvarez Empire arc is probably one of my favorite, just just it looks like it was going to be one of my favorite arcs of all time. They had so much build up, like between the Sprig and Twelve. The E and D stuff, the Nazi and Zero stuff. It looked like everything was converging. That would, and you almost get. It looked like I was gonna get everything that like I thought the ending would be. And those that compl- went to the end know that it ba- was not that. So when I heard that uh, Hiromashi was doing a sequel series, I was like, eh, like maybe we'll see. But then I heard that JC Staff was gonna be like adapting an anime adaptation of it, and I was like, you know what? It's one, Fairy Tale is just one of those series that have always been like near and dear to my heart. It's my first real like big shonen anime. I would say that I watched. Some people got into at first like Naruto, Bleach, Hunter x Hunter, and all those great shows. But Fairy Tale was the, like my first big anime series in terms of like just how many episodes it was. And it was like that big kind of shonen popular series. It was always mine. Um, so I had a deep love for it. I have most of the manga volumes. I have the entire series on Blu-ray. So, I was like, I'm going to give it a chance. Um, I watched the first episode, and I was like, okay, I'm hooked. And by the end of the, the 12th episode, I can officially say we are so back. I it, it went from we're so over, it's so over to we're so back. I absolutely loved the 12th episode, the first core we got. I'm going to do, I'm going to watch the second core because we're getting another 12 episodes as well, but... The first core of this series is absolutely great. It reminded me a lot of early, early fairy tale. I liked a lot of the content and whatnot that we ended up getting. Um, so I was really excited that we're back. Um, to start off, I, I left right where we left off. Uh, I was a little bit salty uh, about the uh, Alvarez Empire. So it, it came off right after that. And so... I like the idea of how it starts off with the hundred year quest. It's like they always talked about like from early fairy tale, like like Guild Arts and all these other members would go on these quests that would seemingly take forever. Um, you had to be like a high level mage to go do them. And I thought the I thought the whole setup for like this this sequel series was really good. Like you it was this long quest because you had to go fight these you had to go find and seal these five legendary dragons. So it had a really good start uh, set up to it. And for the first couple of episodes, it's done a really good job at setting up the dragons and just how powerful they are. And on top of that, like the other guild, it, it, they, they're traveling to a different continent, so going to all these new places has been really fun. Like from the seaside village where Merkphobia is to all to all these other different places, where, uh, to Fairy Nell, which is basically like a uh, an Edelus version. Like man can never let it go. It's basically like an Edelus version of the guild, where like all of them are actors and. There's a big shout out to all the couplings and pairings in there too, which is great from like uh, Natsu and Lucy and whatnot. So like the whole the whole world building from here is great. I love the idea of the dragon. Like oh, there are these five legendary dragons, and you get how like powerful they are too. Like all of them, like all of them are really cool too. Like all of them have great designs. Here, one thing that Hero Mushroom does a really good job on, I don't think he gets enough credit, is how cool. I love his character design from great characters like Jalal. Um, to like all the to all of his characters he ends up designing like Urza like he he has a really good job at like design like Sting everyone I love Sting's design but like he is he does a really good job with his characters designs um and like Ignea is probably one of my favorite designs of his I love like this he kind of um I love the just the wild look to him he's got all these tattoos it's just the, like like he does a, I love all the dragons designs he's done a really good job at it so they have to go seal all these real legendary powerful dragons, and they give you like a good sense of scope of just how powerful these dragons are. Like, like Igneo, we know from like the original series is really powerful, but like these things would have probably stomped them because like, we see how powerful Merkphobia is, like which is like the water dragon god that we see like that's over the seaside village, and you see how much like control he has over water and the oceans. It's like oh shit! It's like these dragons actually probably would have stood a pretty good chance at actually defeating Acnologia. 
Um, and one of them makes a comment about it, like, oh, like, I actually could. And you're like, oh, okay, Ag these would probably stand their ground against Acnologia, especially uh, Ignea. Ignea is really cool. But the character designs are great. Um, and then on top of the the 100 year quest, or that like the main group, like Natsu Lucy, Wendy, uh, Urza, Gray, and everyone. On top of that, there's also like another like story going on. There's there's uh, Toko. She's she's the white magic like mage apparently. Like it's kind of like a mirror of Zeref, where, Zer where Zeref's like magic is just like overly powerful and just like it causes like death. It seems like the white magic is like a, it's like a, it's not a complete nullification, but it seems like it's like um, it keeps. It's an interesting idea because like it, it there's it's like two bodies in one soul that's controlling Toka. One's actually like the evil white mage, and the other one's actually the girl who's being possessed itself. And it seems like from the white magic is basically there to like could, and make sure that no mage becomes too powerful. It's like Toka, wh where were you when Zeref was around, boss? Like, <laughs> um, but it's an interesting idea, and I've actually I like the way that they've kind of like explained it. She kind of like well every like dying white um which is sus but it's it's their way of like she goes after she's also going after these dragons to basically take away their magic power and i don't really believe that she's just doing it to make sure one individual doesn't get too powerful i do think there's an ulterior motive there so like between the five legendary dragons to be sealed to like toka i it has a really good setup and it makes you just like oh like i really want to like follow the story and on top of that um, <laughs> I'm not going to complain. We get a lot of the moment though. We got a lot of moments and stuff between, uh, the humor. Like, uh, I love heroes, um, sense of humor. Like I, like it's, it's great. Like we get, um, one of my favorite bits from what we have so far is the stuff between your Urza and Jalal. The couplings very much get a lot of love in the sequel series, which I'm, I'm really happy about because that was one of the things that I figured they would do in the Alvarez arc was that all of them would get together at the end, like Natsu and Lucy, Jalal and Urza, Grey and Juvia. Um, Levy and Gajil actually did get together, so that did happen. But, like, the the big three, like, they didn't happen. So I'm glad this sequel series kind of gives us a little hope. And you can tell, like, they, they spent a lot of fun, uh, time poking about it. Like, Fairy Nail, like, the alternate version of Juvia is, like, this stripper, and her and Grey are kind of an item, and then Nazi and Lucy, Nazi and Lucy are very much, like, uh, a thing. It's great, and then, <laughs> they, the stuff that's in the, la in the last couple episodes, the stuff between Urza and Jalal is hilarious. The, Jalal's over here thinking he's about to get dommed by Urza, like, I'm just like, okay, Jalal. He's like, <laughs> they're, and over, Urza's over here trying to seduce him, and they're trying to have, like, a seduce-off between who's, who's actually gonna win, and it's absolutely hilarious, and I I, I laughed multiple times. Like, this is what I mean. Like, I'm so happy this is back. And I'm so happy that I gave Fairy Tale 100 Year Quest, uh, 100 Year Quest, to try because I love it so far. After the second core ends up finishing, I'll end up probably uh, continuing with the manga, which I'm curious how long it's going to run because, to my knowledge, it's not like a weekly going thing. I think it's either bi-weekly or monthly. Um, so I'm curious how long you'll keep it going. I feel like if there's five dragons, I know we've defeated, basically sealed one of them with Merkphobia. I feel like the other four probably won't warrant more than 300 chapters, I would probably say. But I am really excited to see where we go with it. Again, I love the first core. There's so many moments that from from humor, from the couplings, to honestly just ones that hit you in the heart. The... Um, one of the big standouts. Bit one of the big standouts would probably be like uh, Nazi when he when he's fighting Wraith when he gets to see Zeref with Mavis with August on the card. Uh, it's great. Like it's it's like he shows that like oh like it, it, he, this is like his kind of version of an afterlife in his heart. He's kind of forgiven Zeref and I'm hoping my I love Zeref. Zeref was always one of my favorite characters in the show. Um, kind of disappointed obviously at what happened to him, but you know what. I hope that my man Zareph is happy with Mavis somewhere, and it's like living, their, you know, living their best life. I, it was cool to see Igneal again and everyone else. It was great. So I'm really loving it. For I'm really liking it so far. I'm really in the way that the second, the first core ends. It ends up with Toka. Basically, she's been trying to find Natsu the whole damn time, and and then at the end, end of the first uh, episode twelve, she ends up finding him. So I'd be curious to see what kind of history she has with him because she seems to have known Nazi from a long time ago. And we know that Nazi was hundreds of years old. So like 
I'm curious if it will be kind of a link into like Natsu's kind of past to see how maybe she saved it. Maybe Natsu saved her when they were really young or something. Because it sounds like Toko, the white mage version, has been around for a really long time. So I'm ke- I'm very excited that I, I gave this a chance. And I'm really excited to see where the second core ends up going. Um, so that's all I got for this one. Uh, let me know what y'all thought below. If y'all, if you were watching 100 Year Quest, let me know what y'all thought of it below. Um, I'm happy we're back. And again, we went from it's so over to we're so back. I think that Fairy Tale 100 Year Quest has a good chance and potential to to salvage what was the Alvarez arc. So I'm really, and it really does. It's done a pretty good job at showing it too. Honestly, one one thing, but the one of the moments that made the series stand out to me so far i forgot to mention earlier when ignia which is igneo's son comes and he gives natsu his fire we get to see what i had always thought e and d would be in the at the in, at the second half of the alvarez arc that just uncontrollable just basically um unhinged like control that natsu loses but in term but gains like power and there's a moment where when he eats Igneous Fire where he you see a view of that and I want more than anything to see more of that. It's such a good plot point of like Natsu finally losing control because it adds something deeper to his character. And I think it's cool. Again, we never got to see it with E and D, but I, I think with Igneous Flames, we finally might get to see like Natsu just loot like again, he want, he wanted to kill like an unarmed opponent, an un- unconscious opponent. So I'm really excited. I hope we get to see more of that. And it was really cool to see that Lucy was on the calm down. But I hope we get to see more of that because it's really good stuff. I uh, Again, it's what I always kind of wanted to see out of the E&D version of Nazi that we just never got to see. But if you guys watch Fairy Tale 100 Year Quest, just let me, let me know if y'all liking it or y'all liking it so far uh, so far in um, the comments below. And let me know what y'all want to see. Let me know. I'm going to probably do a video on what I'm watching for fall season. I'll do uh, I'll do a reminder when I do because uh, I'm going to go over uh, Aya sometimes confesses her feelings in Russian too. Um, but let me know what you're watching for fall season. And if you enjoyed uh, Fairy Tale 100 Your Quest, let me know what y'all thought of it in the comments below. That's all I got for this one, guys. Take care, and I'll see y'all next one.